Enfit has given us the thumbs up. Would you? No way. I think it's crazy to reopen the indoor hospitality at this point. And it's clear that the hospitality sector has captured the mainstream. And that's what we're all talking about. Um, but I, I think it's wrong to couch Neffet's advice in the way that Damien has, because they didn't, for example, advise that under 18s who aren't vaccinated should be going into restaurants with their parents. But the government have taken that step to allow that to happen. There's also the question of the young people who serve in the restaurants and pubs uh, indoors who aren't vaccinated. And we've already seen there's a new study this week on hospitality workers released from NUIG which showed pre-COVID the level of um, abuse of their rights that happens right across the sector. Not every employer, not every worker is abused or I abuses, but there's a very high level of it in hospitality. And this only compounds that for those young workers. I think it is crazy. We've come so far after 20 odd months that we could wait an extra five, six weeks to have 70 to 80 percent cohort of the population fully vaccinated and then uh, attempt to reopen. Because that's what it will take, about six weeks to have everybody, not everybody, but about 80% of the Breed, population. what about all these businesses that say they need the money from the next six weeks or so to tide them over for the rest of well, the year? Well, I believe that the government should give them financial supports and should continue to keep the supports in place of the pandemic unemployment pay payment for workers. For how long? Because it's cost 30 billion to date. How well, much more can be spent? I mean, I could say we may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb to you because we are, if it's cost us 30 billion so, for, so far yes. and we take, give another six weeks to get 80% of the population fully vaccinated and it goes up to 35 or 36 billion, then what's the difference? What The difference is that we're putting public health first, mm. not uh, not the, the financial yeah. state of, uh, of the okay. books Go that the government are looking at and, and, and Michael McGrath made a statement about it today and it is all borrowing there's no talk of increasing taxes on the very vast wealth that has been amassed during covid the evidence is there that there's been vast vast amount of wealth amassed by a tiny few but nevertheless amassed damien Matt, and we can manage have that. been reopened safely and successfully um, well, I don't know, can we say that? Because the Delta variant is seen, as you said at the outset, over a 1,000 cases a day, which was the most pessimist, beyond the most pessimistic not, scenario painted that. by Neffet when the variant came here. Um, now, it's not good enough for Damien to say we're doing this carefully and slowly. He said this before Christmas. All of the uh, government said this before Christmas, but yet they were determined to open up the shops and the hospitality sector at the same we, time. Very despite being warned the by Neffet that, that, yeah. that that wouldn't uh, help to improve the situation, it would only be very dangerous. Then we go into a big lockdown in January. We don't want to go into lockdown again. Mm. And we're, it's yeah. not fair to the owners of restaurants and pubs to put it on them to police the government's guidelines. It Damien, really is not. Let's Damien English back in. Yeah, I, again, to compare what's happening now to last Christmas are totally different because we didn't have a vaccine in play. Okay. And that's key to this. Now, of course, but it's not right. a panacea. Over the next you said two, yourself before, over the next, it's not a panacea. Over it has to be combined with public health guidelines. Okay. Yeah, so again, it is in, in line with public health guidance because we all have to play our part to protect the spread of the virus in the months ahead. But we believe we can do this uh, safely with advice and, and based on the vaccination rollout. But that this urgency, this desire, it seems, among so many people to have these certs and to get away. Well, I don't think it's all just about getting away. I think it's all about being able to use them to go in and out of hospitality when it opens as well, which is a point I meant to cover, which is the discriminatory nature of what's being proposed is that those who are not vaccinated for whatever reason and some have chosen not to be are now going to be discriminated against and this is dividing our society this question of discri vaccine discrimination is dividing us and i think it's a very very wrong thing to do but i do know from family and friends of mine who've been traveling into the country or trying to get out that there's a huge amount of confusion around what the government are saying the guidelines change on the website regularly and getting in touch with them is nearly impossible. Now, yeah, I to, think, be, to be very clear, I think there's loads of people out there very clear, Anybody travelling is asked uh, uh, every day to check the guidance because the guidance and the advice for any country coming in or out uh, of Ireland and every other country as well can change. And so the advice is always to track that. Yes, the digital cert is, is, is enabler and in most European countries it's, it's satisfactory, but you still have to check the advice uh, on that and, to, and to be very clear about that as well. And this thing about it's discriminatory, we know it's not ideal, but we have to get our businesses reopened, our customers back in, and our people back at work. That's an important part of learning to live with COVID. And I think it's only going to be temporary at any time over the last 18 months. That's part of dealing with COVID. And you, you, it's not ideal, it but that's life. COVID, and we have to move and on. And my to my basic argument is here, here is that we've come so far 
that it would require another six weeks, seven at the maximum, to see a huge cohort of the population fully vaccinated and not put at risk the health service yet again. And lots of young people who may get the, the Delta variant, and we don't know what are the long-term impacts of that. And I just think we're also probably risking the safe reopening of our schools and colleges. If the numbers rise, as they have been ex exponentially every day, they get worse and worse, then we are risking the reopening of schools and colleges. Now, ask any citizen, which would you prefer, to be able to go into a restaurant or pub or to safely send your kids well, back Green, to Well, is that an college? argument for trying to extend the vaccination programme to all secondary school children as quickly as possible? We should try and get everybody who, who can be vaccinated as quickly as possible, but we don't need to open the indoors of restaurants and pubs and discriminate against people who are not vaccinated. Uh, Damien English...